name is Steve Kramer. I'm an associate professor of neurology at the University of California, Irvine. I'm a neurologist uh, with specialty in stroke. Stroke is when oxygen delivery to the brain is interrupted and part of the brain goes away forever. The problem is that when brain areas are injured, the behaviors that arise from those injured areas are changed or abolished. When a person survives a stroke, as 80-90% of people will, they survive carrying with them new inabilities. Human disability arises from the fact that the brain isn't all there anymore and the behaviors aren't there or aren't normal anymore. People can't do what they used to do, can't speak or see or feel or move. And uh, so when a blockage to the brain causes part of the brain to go away, those behaviors go away and the person can't go back to their life as it was. It's a major problem. Worldwide stroke is thought to be the number two cause of death. And in the United States, Canada, England, Germany, Japan, most Western countries, stroke is the number three cause of death and the number one cause of adult disability. Getting the person to be aware of a stroke, getting them transported to a medical facility, and having the medical facility certified and up and running, ready to respond properly, uh, have been major obstacles. So if we have a drug that works, but you have to give it within an hour or two of the stroke onset, we've got a problem. And for that reason, many of the promising drugs emerging from research in the 1980s and 1990s have not met with success giving it to people in the real world where people arrive hours and hours after a stroke. One of the bigger success stories has been the clot busters, thrombolytics, TPA or tissue plasminogen activator among them. The studies suggest that you can give this to a person within three hours of a stroke and odds are the person will be better off down the road for it. Even still, IV TPA, which has been shown to be helpful for people with ischemic strokes, blockage strokes, in six controlled studies, IV TPA is given on average to about 2% of Americans with an ischemic stroke. The other 98% don't ever see the benefit of this drug that most neurologists think is a very good treatment. The promise of therapies that target repair with its therapeutic window measured in hours, days, maybe longer, the promise is that we will be able to help a much larger fraction of people and that we will be able to take a bigger bite out of that huge cost to society and to families and that we will help the brain amplify and improve its natural repair processes. Right now I call it BE therapy. The B stands for beta HCG and the E stands for erythropoietin. Beta HCG, beta human chorionic gonadotropin, is a protein all of our bodies make. Women make it in startling levels when they're pregnant. The second protein is erythropoietin, which once again is a natural occurring protein. It's in all of us. We all make it. You go to Denver, you need more red cells because of the high altitude, you make more erythropoietin. These are two uh, uh, proteins that are naturally occurring that we all have in us anyhow, uh, and furthermore, that have been given to people uh, in higher doses for years. Beta HCG is, is used in the treatment of, of certain medical conditions, and erythropoietin is used in the treatment of a range of conditions, including hematologic disorders and renal failure. When given in the sequence as described in our study, the exact mechanism by which these two compounds are going to help the brain I think is not completely worked out. Uh, it appears that they stimulate natural repair processes. It, it appears that they help cells that want to show up 
and support recovery to do a better job. The first thing that happens is you look at whether this is a promising therapy in animal studies, and I think that we have some data that are very exciting there. The next thing is to see if this is safe. I know that these medicines have been given to healthy subjects, a so-called phase one study, and found to be safe. The next thing is to see if this therapy approach is safe in people with stroke. And that study will be beginning at the University of California Irvine Medical Center very soon. It's been approved by the FDA to proceed. It's been approved by my university's institutional review board. And we should be ready to roll sometime quite soon. Once a compound is found to be uh, effective in animals, safe in people, safe in the target population, then the next thing that would happen is to compare the drug head-to-head -head with placebo in what would be called a placebo-controlled study. Finally, if things look good in that study, a large study, more definitive study, uh, with lots of statistical power to really increase confidence would proceed, a so-called phase three study. So we're, we're a few steps down that pathway. The animal data are exciting. Healthy subjects tolerate these natural occurring proteins well and we're about to begin a study in stroke patients to look at the safety. This study is supported by stem cell therapeutics. Um, and this is, in, in, in many ways, a real groundbreaking study. This is translational work. This is taking animal studies that suggest a promise for a new direction of therapy and bringing it to the human bedside in a condition where the majority of people are not getting uh, treated with the latest scientific advances due to the time constraints. There is a great promise in my mind to uh, targeting the repair processes in the brain because of the wide time window. I salute stem cell therapeutics and University of California Irvine who together are bringing this study down new trailblazing lanes.